Hi everyone, welcome to 40k on point, the channel that quantify warmer 40k. This video describes the chaos knight uh, using our predefined metrics. If you want to know more about the methodology that is used in this video, please follow the link in the description. Knights were well defined in previous video. What we are going to focus in this video are the options that are not available for the Imperial Knights. If you are a Chaos Knight player and uh, you want to check more the traditional Knights, I suggest that you go in the video for the Imperial Knights. All the Knights that will be analyzed in this video are from the Aberrant class, so they have very similar statistics. They all have 12 inch of movement, 3 plus ballistic skill, 8 strength, toughness 8, 24 wounds, and a save 3 plus. Also, iron shield that gives them a 5 plus invulnerable save against a ranged weapon. So, and they are all super heavy walkers, so uh, they can fall back and charge, uh, and they can also move above uh, infantry units. The first unit to be analyzed is the Knight Desecrator, which is uh, for 400. To 10 points you are getting a knights armed with a heavy stubber laser destructor and uh, the thunder strike gauntlet the knight desecrator is a heavy d3 16 inch of range strength 14 ap minus 4 d6 damage that can also make mortal wounds so it's a dedicated uh, anti-tank weapon uh, the Thunder Strike uh, Gauntlet gives a uh, strength 4 attack strength 16, AP minus 4, damage 6, uh, and you must subtract 1 from the hit roll. And the Titanic Feet uh, gives giving a 12 attack of strength 8 and AP minus 2 and damage 3. Also, the specific of that unit is that. Uh, they can reroll hit rolls of one for war dogs. So they are a force, kind of force multiplier for the war dogs. So overall, the desecrator is uh, considered to be 92% uh, worth its point. So it's a bit below uh, what it's worth. Uh, it is uh, less efficient than the preceptor, which is the equivalent for the Imperial Knight. Because the Imperial Knight has having a, a, a more flexible shooting capacity and its anti tank uh, shooting for the uh, preceptor is better than the one of the desecrator. Uh, again, they have a very good anti tank melee uh, score, and uh, however, its fortitude score is uh, lower, that means the defensive cost is. Uh, below average so you're paying a bit less your normalized wound so overall it's a unit that is close to be worth its point the chaos knight have uh, the option with their knight despoiler to equip their knight uh, with uh, double weapons so they can have uh, two times uh, gatling cannon uh, rapid fire battle cannon and two uh, thermal cannon so those are the options that we are going to uh, check. Uh, so essentially, uh, it's the, 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 the same night, and we're going to see if those options are uh, valuable uh, in our metrics. So the first option is a despoiler with two Avenger uh, Gatling Cannon. So uh, for 24 shot, strength 6, and AP minus 2, damage 2. And overall, it makes, and when it comes to close combat, it's using its titanic feet. Uh, overall, it makes a unit that is uh, less, not really worth its point, close to be uh, arranged. Uh, so, to, because the, 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 for the defensive cost is uh, much higher, because you're paying both. Avenger uh, Gatling Cannon, it's quite expensive. And uh, while you are getting some anti-personal shooting capacity with it, you are losing also your anti-tank melee and uh, 
uh, it's not a good trade-off because you are increasing at the same time your defensive cost. So that makes uh, uh, the spoiler with two Avenger cannon, Gatling cannon, uh, would not be a good choice. A worse choice would be uh, the spoiler with two rapid uh, battle cannon, and really that does increase dramatically the cost of the unit. So it brings the unit to uh, 525 points, which bring its uh, fortitude cost to uh, be very very uh, high and per point it does not really increase the shooting capacity so you are paying more but you do not deliver per point really much more damage uh, so it that's why it's uh, you are losing when you are getting two rapid fire cannon and that is a good indicator then probably the rapid fire cannon is not worth its point so for 465 points, you are getting a despoiler with two thermal cannon. And overall, it gives a unit that is a bit more than worth its point. Uh, the, it becomes really a good anti-tank shooter uh, with a, a good capacity. It is not very good in melee, but uh, it, is, uh, it is flexible. Um, However, its defensive cost is a, is, a, is a bit higher than average, but the damage output that this unit can deliver is higher than its defensive cost. So that's why it is considered to be a bit more worth than, uh, than its point. For 400 points, we are getting a despoiler that is specialized in, in melee with uh, two melee weapons, plus one attack, plus one to his uh, weapon skill and uh, it gives a unit that is def definitely worth its point so uh, no shooting uh, capacity so no damage output from shooting but a good damage output from melee and its fortitude score is below average so it makes a unit that uh, is damage output equals its uh, defensive cost and if you are a good observer you would notice that uh, uh, the uh, Knight Errant is at 103% because in the Matrix uh, it was uh, considered to be armed with uh, a Meltagon, where here it is armed with a uh, heavy, heavy Stubber. So uh, I guess we can infer from that that for Knights, uh, many options, the Meltagon would be uh, a more point efficient option. The Knight Rampager is a very similar unit, but uh, with one exception, it has the Frenzied Rampage uh, that allows to do uh, some exploding six when you do uh, attack with your Thunder Strike Gauntlet, and that's for 415 points, so it's uh, 15 more points that are uh, into this uh, unit. So the 15 point for the Rampager appears to be a uh, efficient choice. Uh, it does not increase a lot its fortitude score. However, it does increase its anti-tank melee capacity uh, significantly. So it brings uh, the unit to a five star level. And for that reason, uh, the 15 points, even if it does uh, affect trade, uh, a trade off other elements, because you're paying more per point for other things, uh, it does create a very good uh, damage output against vehicle. So overall, the, the knights are options uh, that can be uh, interesting in a friendly match. I don't think we are going to see a lot of them in a competition. Um, one thing that I liked about this analysis is I was able to uh, concentrate on different options. And after I've covered all the units of 40k, I will go back for each uh, main unit like Lemon Ross. And I'm going to look at every uh, option for those, uh, those units to see what would be, be more effective. So I would say that for the Knights, the best range weapon would be a thermal cannon. And the best uh, side weapon would be the Meltagon. Also for the... Uh, Chaos Knight, well, uh, we'll look further for the Rampager, 
which is a dedicated uh, anti-tank uh, melee unit so uh, and it is a very efficient one so uh, we'll look further in our analysis try to bring it uh, closer to the uh, competitive 200 percent value so if we put the analysis a bit further on the rampager i think we can turn this unit to a competitive level so the uh, if we take the rampager and we bring it to the iconoclast house uh, it brings the unit to 120 percent essentially it gives a plus one attack when it charge and a plus one armor penetration also when it uh, charge and if we consider the uh, frenzied attacker and pride fueled uh, fury uh, it brings uh, the the worth to 157 percent frenzied attacker is an exploding six on their melee attacks and pride fueled fury is uh the attack is increasing when uh uh, the unit is uh, losing uh, some wounds, so uh, below uh, half its uh, its total, uh, it increase one on its attack and plus one to hit. So it makes a unit that even if it has some damage, it can fight well. And also the Iconoclast can have a Vow of Dominance uh, for two command point at the beginning of the game. And uh, that brings... Uh, the unit to 173%. Essentially what it does, it increases its uh, uh, defensive capacity. Uh, rule two wounds against that unit are uh, more difficult. Uh, one, two, and three are always uh, a failure. And if we put the Warlord trait, Knight Diabolus, that increase one attacks, and we give the Gauntlet of Ascension, uh, it brings a unit to 265%. The gauntlet is amazing. It's, uh, it allows to reroll on to hit and to wounds. Uh, so very, very, very good uh, weapon. Uh, and that has a dramatic impact on uh, the Rampager. That is already an amazing uh, unit. But if it close another knight or any vehicle, it will wreck it apart. So overall, it makes a unit that can be competitive. So this video describes uh, options for the Chaos Knight using our normalized metrics. Please feel free to comment on how to increase the efficiency of those units. Subscribe if you like this kind of content. I will upload all the units of 40k using exactly the same method. Thank you for watching. Over and out.